And front row in our studio tonight are actors Will Miller and Ellie Leach and Radio On film critic Ali Plum. <laughs> Lovely to have you. Now, Will, you are no stranger to a red carpet. And uh, let's face it, Mr Bates versus the post office must be up for a TV BAFTA. But let's talk about award ceremonies in general. Do you like them? No. Uh, what? <laughs> what a start. No, it's, I'll tell you why. It's just, I, I've done a few red carpets, right? Yeah. And the problem you've got, if there's someone more famous than you in front of you or behind you, right. they just usher you along. <laughs> it wasn't all to Will. <laughs> <laughs> no one, we want to get to Simon Cowell who's behind him. You know, I had that and I was just thinking, I, unless I'm nominated, I'm not going because it's just a bit, it's a bit weird, you know what I mean? It's, it's strange, but it filled with some glamour, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, look, we were talking about obviously the BAFTAs now and Ellie, I wondered if you would just, you know, you'd, you'd put everything into voting for Barbie because we did see the Barbie cameo <laughs> on the Strictly tour. Oh, I mean, there oh. it is. <laughs> I absolutely loved being able to play Cowgirl Barbie. It was actually a dream come true. Really? Yeah, I loved it. Perfect. Excellent. Well, Ali, there are some hot contenders for best film. What do you think is going to win? Ooh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? We've got a really good bunch of possible winners. We have the likes of The Holdovers, Poor Things, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Atme of the Fall. But I think the likely winner will be Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. directed by some up-and-comer called Christopher Nolan. Of yeah. course, he's given us... Inception, Interstellar, the Dark Knight Batman films. I think now is his time. He's earned this Best Director BAFTA award. And starring in the movie, as I'm sure you guys know, we have Killian Murphy. Unbelievably, yeah. this is the first time he's been nominated for Best Actor, and he is looking likely to win. Some other possibilities, but it could be his year as well. Oh, it is but a good film. Though, it is it? a good film, but if you had the power, who would you like to see win? Yeah, if I had the power. Yes. Oppenheimer, yes, a worthy winner, but I also adore this darkly funny, really sweet, but really sombre at times Christmas movie called The Holdovers. It stars Paul Giamatti and he could win the Best Actor Award as well. So yeah. it's a two horse race. Love that film. Well, what about outstanding British film? Everyone seems to be talking about that category. Yes, it's interesting. Uh, another incredible collection of possibilities. We have the likes of All of Us Strangers, a 100% solid gold star weepy there. Scrapper, How to Have Sex, don't Google it, bit tricky. Yep. We've also got, I think, the likely winner, Jonathan Glazer's the zone of interest. This is incredibly moving yeah. and, again, very sombre. It's the story of this uh, concentration camp commandant and his family trying to build their own perfect life next door to the camp. Now, you might think, how is this a British film? It's actually a British, German, Polish co-production and it is looking likely to win. It is a dark horse in this category for sure. We've also got Saltburn, well worth mentioning. Yeah. This was a sensation in December. A few moments that went viral, including a musical moment uh, to the dulcet tones of one Sophie Ellis Bexter. Yes, Murder legend. on the Dance Floor, complete legend. Yeah. She's actually going to be performing this Sunday at the BAFTAs themselves, live. That'll be exciting. We That's love her. Man, yeah. Jacob Elordi's in this movie. We've got Rosamund Pike. You'll know Jacob Elordi from a number of things, but he's been nominated for an EE e. Rising Star Award, the only category voted for by us, the general public. Also, I want to mention Wonka, because it's so sweet. It's nice to see a big family movie. Yeah. It's from the director of The Paddingtons, Paul King, and it stars Timothy Chalamet. Really sweet, and still in cinemas today, if you hunt down that film. OK, now the actresses. Margot Robbie's in there for Barbie, but who else has caught your eye? Yes, well, interesting. Emma Stone is a genuine... I don't know, I don't want to say it's a lock, but she looks likely to win for her performance in the utterly bonkers Poor Things. I also want to shout out Vivian Opera, who is just... I mean, she's outstanding in this gorgeous, sweet, kind and heartfelt rom-com. You can watch it on streaming right now, which means you don't have to go to the cinema if you don't want to. But again, it's called Rye Lane, this movie, and she's so good in it. Also, Sandra Huller, who's in Anatomy of Four. I hope I've got your name right, Sandra. She is brilliant in both Anatomy of Four and also the movie I mentioned earlier, The Zone of Interest. But so many crazy, incredibly big names are going to be at the ceremony this Sunday. We've got David Beckham, whoever he is, Dua Lipa, and David Tennant will be hosting. And I'll do my best not to rock up dressed as Doctor Who, as <laughs> I so often do. It's sort of my thing. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And go and see him. Have a picture with him. Go on. Yeah. I will. Do it. I will. Do it. 100%. Oh, well, look, it is going to be so much fun. It's always the thing with, with those types of films and, and those award ceremonies because you go, oh, that's definitely going to win. And then you go, oh, but that was good. Yeah. And that was good as well. It's difficult. But, but look, thank you so much. Ali will be at the BAFTAs on Sunday night. And the rest of us can watch them on BBC One and iPlayer from 7pm. 
Still to come, Will and Ellie will be telling us about life on the road. Yeah, but now, Will, we mentioned it a moment ago, Mr Bates versus the post office. Yeah. I mean, it has just done absolutely brilliantly. Radio Times Covers Award, congratulations. Thank you. Um, but all of this, it kind of came at a bit of a, a strange time for you, because am I right in saying that, that you almost, before it came about, quit acting altogether? Yeah, um, it'd been a tough few years. Um, I mean, listen, I've already achieved more than I ever dreamt of from where I came from. And, yeah. and I'm, every part that I've got, I really appreciated. And anyone who's given me a job, I really appreciated. It was just that for a few years, I wasn't being seen for the parts anymore. And the dramas were coming along and I wasn't getting in the room. And I was on the phone to my agent. And, and I've done a few factual things and hosting. And I was, I was just thinking, if I have my time now, as I'm, I'm not going to be seen for these things. If, if that's the case, that's fine, but I need to focus my energy elsewhere because I've got to support my family, you know. We're self-employed and yeah. we have to work, and I was just thinking, it was sort of stressing me out, like, on the phone, going, I, I, am I going to be seen for this? And I wasn't getting in the room, so I said to my wife, maybe I need to just sort of stop that and focus on other things so I can make sure I can support my family. And then the next day, my agent rang me and he said, I've got a script for you. It's an offer and it's called Mr. Bates versus the post office. Yeah. And it's, it's probably the biggest thing I've ever done. Um, and the story I want to say really is to anybody watching this is don't give up. You never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Whatever yeah. you're going through, you know, just yeah. see what tomorrow's going to bring. Because, you know, sometimes when you stop looking, it lands in your lap. Well, that's it. And it, it seemed to have made such an impact, that show alone. You know, thank you already. Uh, comments coming in. Uh, this one, someone calling themselves just a TV fan says, I, I loved you uh, in Mr. Bates versus the Post Office. Brilliant, powerful and heartbreaking television. Uh, your performance had me in tears. I mean, when you, when you hear comments like that, yeah. I mean, how have you found the reception <clears throat> of the show? Unbelievable. Unprecedented. I mean, I, you couldn't have even imagined when we were filming it, because it's a true story, we hoped it would land with people because we knew this hopefully would give these people that this had happened to a voice and that's all they wanted. Yeah. Um, and the, it shows you the power of television. Uh, but we couldn't have imagined how big it was going to go with the general public and how angry people were going to be um, and stand up and go, no, someone, this needs, someone needs to be held accountable for this and let's get these people what's coming to them. Let's get justice for these people. So I overwhelmed, um, A, to be in it, to be asked to be in it, but then the response uh, from the general public, it just shows you what we can do in this country when we see wrong and we come yeah. together and we go, no, we need to sort this out. Uh, they're still kicking the can down the road a little bit and there's a lot more people out there that, uh, that, that wasn't in the, in the drama that, uh, that need to be looked after. Uh, so I just hope people get what's coming to them, the justice mm. and the yeah. people who you know, means to be held accountable for this. Um, but yeah, an amazing response and over, it was, over, it was absolutely overwhelmed. Incredible. But you've got another project coming up. You're taking a two pints podcast on tour with your buddy Ralph Little. Um, an extended lads holiday, basically, yeah? yeah. <laughs> it's work. Yeah. <laughs> now, That's what I tell the wife. <laughs> I'm going to work. Now, Ralph um, showed Mr Bates a lot of love, but yeah. you've been less than complimentary what? about Death in Paradise. What, because I've not watched it? Yes. <laughs> Maybe just that. <laughs> I, was, well, I was in Death in Paradise, right, and I played the murderer, and I think it just went downhill after that. <laughs> I think once I wasn't in it, it was no point in watching it anymore. Right, OK. Uh, but, no, it, it's not just that. It's just I don't get to watch much telly. I mean, I, 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 when we're with my family... But he's not, your mate. I know, but, you know. <laughs> but, but that, 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 I see him enough in the exactly. podcast. Well, well, that's what we want to know. You know and we, we had a great question coming from Trey, who said, uh, Will, what was your first opinion of Ralph when you met him all those years ago? Um, we made each other laugh straight away. Um, um, look at that picture. Look at, look. Yeah, the, yeah, that was the back in the days. I mean, some of the best moments of my life was doing two pints. Young and just, you know, everything in front of you. I and mean, we just had a great time doing it in front of a live audience. We, I, mean, we, I knew you then. Yeah, and we, back in the Some day. nights out. And, uh, but Ralph, Don't tell anyone about those. Ralph, <laughs> believe that. But Ralph's first impression on my wife is he... My wife was a dancer and she had a bowl of food and she just sat down and she was starving. And I brought Ralph home and I went, meet Ralph. And he just put his head in her food and went... <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she went... She's a bit of a germaphobe and she went, well, I can't eat that now. <laughs> and, I, and, and I told him about it I don't know why I did it. I was like, what's wrong with you? He <laughs> just met her. That was his first, her first impression was that Ralph was putting his head in her food. Were you, were you still hanging out? Right, the, the first live tour was a success. What have you got in store this year? Yeah, we went on tour a couple of years back and it was, it was unbelievable. We didn't expect it to go as well as it did and it was just a sellout. And we just wanted people to come and forget about the problems for a couple of hours, have some fun. People are going through a bit of a tough time of it. 
Uh, the podcast we set up in lockdown, uh, people could get to the pub and we thought we'll do a bit of a two pints with Will and Ralph, a bit like Gaz and Johnny sat in a pub, talking about anything and everything, a bit of childish banter mixed in with everything else. And we took it on tour and it's audience participation, we play some games. Mm. It's a different thing every night because people send in their stories. Yeah, because you get the audience to participate, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, we play some games, get them on stage and we just want people to come have some fun, forget about your problems for a couple of hours. And That's why I'm not coming, because I don't want to participate April with April Fool's Tour, it's called the April <laughs> Fool's Tour. It's, uh, yeah, from beginning of April, we're in Leeds, Manchester, Birmingham, Nottingham, Newcastle, Scarborough, Scunthorpe, all over the place. We're adding some more dates, hopefully down south, but if you want to come and have some fun, come and join us. Oh, Love it. brilliant. Thank you so much. Two Pints Live, the April Fool's Tour kicks off on the 4th of April in Leeds, and tickets are available now. Yeah, now very shortly we'll be chatting to Ellie about her stage debut as Miss Scarlet in Cluedo 2. Right, Ellie, spotlight on you. You've just finished the Strictly Tour. You've had lots of fun. You were knocked off your feet. You lost a wig. <laughs> but we want to talk about great Auntie Marley oh, and how she stole the show. Auntie Marley. I know. Honestly, when I seen the video of her, I was like... I can't believe that she's got the spotlight. Look at her. It's so funny. <laughs> she was absolutely loving life. Like your auntie? Yeah, that's my auntie. Oh, I love what it. was funny was the fact that nobody knew it was my auntie. So people were putting videos and stuff um, all on social media of her and like captions with this cute woman. And I yeah. was like, guys, this is my auntie. She's stealing the show right now. <laughs> that's great. Perfect. Well, I mean, you and Vito were so fantastic, but you decided to, to mark the win in a way that I don't know, was auntie proud of it at all? <laughs> I don't know. I think my family probably probably were a bit like, what? Why have you done that? Yeah. But yeah, we got a little matching tattoo. You're gonna show us. Yeah, you can Go on, see, see it. it. It's a little. Um, it's very strange. It's You'll a long be. story, but we've got a little aubergine um, bum and a bee. So it's a bee. It? It's a bee, but it's got an aubergine little bum. And. It, I mean, it's a really, really long story, but we okay. were Confused. the aubergine Com over here. Yeah, team. condense it down. Yeah, we were the aubergine team. We, that's what we named right. ourselves okay, because yes. Vito loves Parmigiana and I'd never tried it, which right. is the main ingredient okay, is yeah. aubergine. Yeah. Um, and the bee is the most resilient insect. And yes. Vito's got a tattoo that says resilience on the back of his arm. And every training day, I would be having hard times and I'd be like, be more resilient. So it's a kind of a mixture of both okay. stories. Yeah, nice. a, mash, a mash up. Yeah. Um, Will, you went on the Strictly tour. Yeah. How did you find it? Loved it. I missed it, you know, when, once I'd finished. Because when you finish Strictly, you're in this weird, like, what do I do now? Because it took over my life. But it was great because you've sort of not got the pressure of you anymore because no. you haven't got the live show, you know, on TV. And you're only doing two dances, same time every night. And you're keeping yourself fit. Oh, I loved it. It was whatever you're going to be dancing in arenas again in my yeah. life. So yeah. brought all my family down like yeah. your auntie and that. Yeah. And just loved it. It was great. Ah, well, it's going to be fantastic because, Ellie, you're going on a different tour. You've got your theatre debut. Am. I mean, Will, if I say you might find Ellie in the dining room with a candlestick, does that give it away? Monopoly. Yes. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> Original. But Ellie, <laughs> how, how are you feeling? I'm so, so excited yeah. to be a part of Cluedo 2. Obviously, like you say, it's, it is my stage debut, um, which makes me a little bit nervous, but the, the whole cast, the production, the show itself, it is amazing it's so much fun and our director mark bell he directed the play that goes wrong probably a lot of oh, people yeah. might know that yeah. yeah and it's kind of the same style and yeah. concept it's so much fun and i think that people will really really enjoy it but well, you're playing miss scarlet and um, what can you tell us about it um and how can they recreate a board game to stage it's... i think that everyone knows kind of the iconic characters of Cluedo. Um, so you've really got the the kind of ideal image of all the characters. Um, but the the show itself is there's lots of kind of little little bits and little bits of fun that you can kind of really pick up from from the audience as well and yeah. they can kind of watch the story and and it is a murder mystery. So, so there's twists and turns. Yeah, there's twists and turns everywhere and people aren't who they claim to be. There's Ooh. lots of masks and I'm traitors. sure that them it's, it's basically like traitors, yeah. but set in the 60s. Oh, fantastic. Well, you know, you, you joined Corrie at such a, a, a young age, but now making your way onto a theatrical debut, a stage debut, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, um, it's very nerve-wracking because it is something that's brand new to me. But I think that doing Strictly and also doing the tour as well, having that live audience there, I think that kind of geared me up to be like, OK, now I know what it's like to be live, to perform live. Um, and I actually really enjoyed 
being in the room with the audience and giving out your energy and receiving it back from them. So I'm really, really hoping that yeah. during this tour that I can get that, that energy as well from the audience. 100%. I mean, we, we have to ask as well, really quickly, both of you obviously appeared in Coronation Street. Will, your character went to prison. Uh, Ellie, yours went to Slough. Slough, yeah. Um, I mean, but is, is <laughs> that... the place. Is, <laughs> is, is that door still open, though? I mean, never say never, obviously. She didn't die. I spent so many amazing years there. I grew up there. Yep. And they will always be like my family. So, yeah, it, it was an amazing experience and I loved it. Brilliant. Fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. And you can see Ellie in Cluedo 2, the next chapter from the 29th of February in Richmond, before it travels all over the UK. And tickets are available right now. And we'll be catching up with Ellie and the production team in a film we're about to make that looks at how you take a show on the road. Mm. Thanks to all our guests tonight. Alex and Lauren will be here on Monday with Joanne Frogot and Ben Fogel. Yeah, and if you tune in to Michael McIntyre's big show tomorrow night, you'll spot a cameo from Alex, JJ and Matt. Be a lot of fun. Have a weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.